UFC Fight Night 161 on ESPN Plus 20. Tampa, Joanna versus Watterson just wrapped up. It was a great night of fights. Here's the fights I want to see next. Because it's a big night. A big amount of contenders coming on streaks. We've got new faces to look at. We've got new guys to challenge some ranked opponents. Very interesting. I want to start off this video with Marvin Vittori versus Ian Heinich. Vittori looked great against Andrew Sanchez. Completely dominated him over three rounds. Heinich needs an opponent. He was supposed to be fighting Tavares. Tavares got pulled out to fill in for Edmund Shabazian. Against Edmund Shabazian. And now Heinich needs an opponent. I want to see Marvin Vittori versus Ian Heinich. The winner can get a shot against someone else in the top 10. That makes big sense to me. Both guys very promising. There can only be one contender. Heinrich versus Vittori. I think Vittori would do work on him as well. Now, Marlon Vera should take on Rob Font. Rob Font is ranked at Bantamweight. He's got a very, I think he's ranked number 11 or 10. A good ranking spot. If there's anyone who's de deserved a shot at someone in the rankings, it's Marlon Vera. How much more does this guy have to do? I think he's finished five guys in a row. It's four or five. Either way, he's dismantling, guys. You're getting these guys hurt. You need to give him someone in the rankings. Rob Font hasn't done enough to be saying, Oh, I need a top five guy. He's going to take on whoever he can get. Marlon Vera versus Rob Font, to me, makes complete sense in January, February. Sign me up. Sign me up. That's a great fight. Speaking of those lower weight classes, Cub Swanson just got a big win. He needs to fight one of three guys. Josh Emmett, if he wants something a bit less dangerous. Arnold Allen, if he wants something a little bit less highly ranked for some reason. Sadiq Youssef, those are the three guys I want Cub Swanson to take a look at next. Those are the guys that make sense. He can use his name to get some of those higher ranked guys. I'm sure Josh Emmett would welcome the challenge of Cub Swanson. That would be a big name fight for him. And that makes complete sense to me. Very good time for Cub Swanson. He's got a lot of options right now. Moving on. Joanna and Jacek. I feel like they need to strike while the fire's hot. Even though she just broke her foot, which does really annoy me. I feel like they need to use the momentum of Yun Jacek to try and push this Zhang fight. Yun Jacek versus Zhang makes way more sense now. Because, yes, Suarez probably is more deserving. But... She hasn't fought in ages. There's no momentum. There's no hype. Everything's died down a bit. And for these lower weight classes, we need to just build off of momentum as much as possible. Yoanni and Jacek just had an Octagon interview that's about to get probably close to a million views, to be honest with you. Probably close to a million views. I think it's on 500,000 right now. You've got to use that, man. You've got to keep the engine going. We need to just keep the promo going. Sign the next fight already. Someone just deflate the balloon foot of Joanny and Jacek for a second and give her to Zhang. That's an amazing fight. I'd love to see it. Zhang versus Joanna makes complete sense. And Suarez can fight someone else in the meantime. There's no rush. And she's injured, she's injured anyway, so who the fuck cares? Moving on. Deverson Figueredo versus Joseph Benavidez. Makes complete sense. Figueredo choked out Tim Elliott in round one with a guillotine. Armin guillotine completely destroyed Tim Elliott. I think Figueredo versus Benavidez makes complete sense. I think it makes amazing sense. I think it's a great fight as well. Both guys like to trade. Both guys like to throw bombs. Both guys like to finish guys. Figueredo, man, that is a savage right there. He is a dangerous, dangerous guy to be submitting Tim Elliott in the first round. I predicted him to win. I didn't think he'd dominate it like that. Figueredo's a beast. Cejudo, come January, Cejudo will have not have fought at flyweight for an entire year. This makes sense to have an interim belt. And also we need cards to fill. And more belts is better for the UFC. So I feel like in the meantime, while Cejudo's still recovering, we tell Cejudo, hey, Triple C, no rush. You relax, you come back healthy in maybe March or April. But for now, in January... We're going to set up a fight between Figueredo and Joseph Benavidez for an interim title. They're both going to get a nice little bit of a pay boost. And they're going to headline a fight night together and build up some hype for the Cejudo fight. Title fights always do better. And I'll tell you this, there's a history of it. 
title fights always do better. If you look at the biggest title fights in history, it comes from interim belts being involved. Because that's the best promo possible. There's two belts. Who's the real champion? That's what we want to know. If you look at the biggest fights in UFC history, McGregor versus Aldo. McGregor had the interim belt. Aldo had the real belt. Boom, one of the biggest fights ever. Israel Adesanya, Robert Whitaker. Adesanya had the interim belt. Whitaker with the real belt. And they have to decide who's best. It just works through history. Interim belts make complete sense to me. I like them. Khabib and Ferguson. There's a whole belt interim belt system going around there. Tony had the interim title. He's going to show up to the press conferences with a belt around his shoulder. I feel like this is the perfect way to build some hype around the flyweight division. And make it so that Cejudo isn't just coming down to a dead division where all the hype of Benavidez has died down. He hasn't fought in six months. And I guess we'll do Cejudo Benavidez. I want to keep these boys active. Fight for the interim belt. Get a big amount of promo. Get a bunch of views on an Octagon interview of a new champion with a belt around their waist. And then build a fight with Cejudo from there. On very short notice turnaround. Let's make it happen, Dana. That's what I want to see after this event. There's a few other fights as well, but those are the ones I really want to see first. I don't give a fuck who... Oh, yeah, and James Vick versus MVP in Bellator. James Vick should be cut. I feel bad for him, but that's four in a row. Three of them by KO in the first round. Not good. It's not good, is it? Um, He should be cut, even though I, I, I like the guy. I think he's a good guy. I just feel like you can't be having a record like that and a resume like that in the UFC. Move to Bellator. You have one chance to redeem your career against MVP and either you face the fate that everyone else, every other can does against MVP and you get KO'd. First of all, it's a big name for MVP coming over from the UFC, a name that everyone recognizes that isn't a complete tin can like the rest of MVP's opponents. And for James Vick, if you beat MVP, you get a resurgence in your career. It makes sense. Like and subscribe. Click that button there. Goodbye.